Episode 11, October 31st, 2013. We are three days into the new NBA season and it is quite exciting already. Even though most, well, a few teams have only played two games. Upset losses, victories, it's all part of the NBA package that we get to experience probably every week. I've seen the Miami's Bulls game, Lakers, Clippers, Suns, Trailblazers, Miami, Philadelphia, and a couple others, and I'm loving it so far. Before I get into other games, I want to talk about the Suns game pretty quickly. To remind those, I am a Suns fan. We all know they're going to be pretty bad next season, but they were quite exciting yesterday. I believe Drogic had 26 and 9, and he's my favorite player on the team, and he is always exciting. Him and Bledsoe is a very fun backcourt. And our one of our newer sons too, Miles Plum, who's also he had a eighteen and fifteen game too, so great for him. And I thought about this too. A bit. It's kind of sad to see Aldridge where he is now. He was up there with Blake Griffin and the best power forwards in the West even a while back, but. Seems he's one game, but even from last season, he's fallen off. Maybe it's the state of the team. I don't know. I don't watch the Blazers too much, but. And the Suns are going to be really shitty, but they're going to be really fun. We didn't see much of Archie Goodwin either, so. There's still him to look forward to. Deontay Christmas. And a couple others, but. This is nice to see the Suns running out there. Just keep going with fast picks, Dragic and ones, Bledsoe and ones. They may not be part of your league past five team, but you should still pick them up and watch them when you can against your favorite teams. Later today, there's going to be the Bulls, Knicks, and Clippers, Warriors. The Warriors are coming off playing the Lakers previous night and destroying them, slapping them around. But Clippers have had a day rest and we're only moving throughout California, so... Fatigue won't be too much of a problem. It could be an exciting game. Hopefully the Clippers get it together and realize they can't coast on the town loan, even though they do have the point god, it's not a, no season's gonna, gonna be a cakewalk for them. Another game I did see was Lakers Clippers and it was quite the show with Whatever Xavier Henry they call him, or Zombie Henry, Weapon X, Professor X, or I haven't seen but Mega Man X. That'd be exciting. And we all know it's the beginning of the season, overreactions are to be had. What can you do about it? It's basketball. We've been starved, we're excited. But still, that is not excuse for very blatant overreactions, but we won't talk about them. Another game I did see, I did see a couple minutes of Thunder Jazz. It was close at some point, so the Thunder pulled it out, but 
I was admittedly I was I napped for some of the game. I was half awake. But it, it'll be great to see Durant just do what he was doing before Westbrook and Harden came. But he's more skilled than ever, of course, so he will be the league's reckoning all by his lonesome. I'll get back to some basketball later, but I wanted to discuss now a game that came up last week, Batman Arkham Origins. I've I purchased it about six days ago, and I've enjoyed it. It's the first one, Arkham Asylum, came out in 2009, and Arkham City in 2011, and then Origins here in 2013. And I played both City and Asylum earlier this spring, and I enjoyed them both. City more with, with its refined combat and gameplay compared to Asylum, but I've given some thought and the city itself it's a collection of your favorite Batman villains, but a lot of the story does not connect together as well, but it's still fun to look at it piecemeal and parts of it. But as a whole the story isn't as strong, but now we have Origins now, now that's a much stronger story and a lot more narrative to it. I won't give out any spoilers, but it draws a lot from the comics in a much more obvious way in terms of Nightfall, the killing joke in year one, and even some of the side quests give some hint to, because it's, because it's a prequel, like, connects well with the later, the other Arkham titles. For those that have played it too, you've noticed the combat is much more difficult with the times. There's all sorts of enemy, new enemy animations, new thugs to beat down, the martial artist and the enforcer. Enemies seem quicker, even though I haven't played the new game plus mode yet, and I will later. It's, it seems much more difficult, and the aerial attack was nerfed which is one of my go-to moves to create space. Kind of like my signature crossover dribble. So I won't be Kyrie Irving those dudes anymore. And sometimes, I, I was pretty decent in Arkham City, but this one I have to I feel like I lost my touch and have to regain it or go with a whole new style of combat. Going back to NBA games I did see, I did watch the Mi some of the Miami Sixers and that was in, it was very hilarious. It's We all expected Miami just to cruise through and out of all teams to lose against, especially this Philadelphia team where the Sixers broadcast was saying that Evan Turner is their best offensive weapon and well, <laughs> even there's still Thaddeus Young and others, but even without Wade, that was still quite embarrassing for Miami. But of course, it's nothing to worry about. They have a whole season. It's not doomsday for them yet. And speaking of doomsday, we have a new harbinger of destruction amongst us. The New Orleans Pelicans mascot, Pierre. That is one scary motherfucking creature. Pictures of it surfaced last night, and my god, that is one terrifying creature. Its beak 
looks like a black hole itself and there's no escaping. And of course, that was a huge opportunity for a lot of neat photos for Matt Moore and others to make up, even myself too. And it's another reason why I like NBC's net. Sparks our creativity and ingenuity. Maybe not as genuinely because it's just plays on one photo, but it is definitely great, great to have the NBA season back for little things like this. We'll remember it later and bring it up with your nightmare jows and such. Today, so far with shaving, it's, I've had a couple more cuts than I'd like than usual, but I wait a bit longer than usual. And admittedly, I did skip a show because of logistics reasons and wait a bit longer than usual to shave, so... I do have a little more facial hair than usual to cut. And more blood than usual, unfortunately. Sometimes I do think I have some really sh strong and resilient neck hair. And as most people, you guys know that neck hair is quite annoying. I don't prefer it. Even when at times I did grow a beard, I'd leave everything but the neck hair. It's like you want to itch or whatever, but... I do know a couple people that do like it, but it's not for me. Also, today is Halloween, and I'm not one to have Halloween plans, but one of my favorite Halloween moments was when I was a kid, and my mom sewed me up a Curious George costume for first grade. We still have it, and of course it doesn't fit, but I'd like to see it, but let me know what your Halloween plans are or what you did. But... It's not something I've, I've celebrated in years, and I don't plan on taking part of it in the next coming years or even today. Finally, I'd like to give a shout out and dedicate this sh whole shout out section to, again, Connor Smith. This one is a bit different than usual, as he provided a very valuable part of the show, the new. Shaving with Hummer thumbnail. Thumbnail and it is fantastic. It's a, it looks like old timey, straight edge 20th century barber shop feel to it. Next time I'll give more notification as for you guys can ask for shout outs and such, but this one I have to dedicate to him within his fine Photoshop work. And he also does, like I said last episode, he does other Photoshop work too, and it's great and it's hilarious. Now, that's the end of today's show and a bit shorter than usual, but again, since it's Halloween, do you know what a ghost's favorite food is on today? Burritos. Thank you and goodbye.